Welcome to FM Evolution. I am your host, Sean Black. And today I'm excited to have a new guest on that I haven't talked to before. And it's one of those things where on this show, we do trends and innovations and technology. And I'm a big technology nerd. So uh, I'm excited to have Jason on from Compology, man. Hey, welcome to the show, Jason. Thanks, Sean. Good morning. Happy to be here. I'm happy to have you guys on. I was telling you guys earlier that I kind of checked out your YouTube videos and your story, and I'm so impressed with what you guys do. But for those who don't know who you guys are, can you tell us a little bit about you and, and, and the company? Sure. Uh, so I'm Jason Gates, one of the co-founders and the CEO at Compology. And what we do is we meter garbage. Um, so the same way that you can meter how much electricity you use, how much water you use, uh, how much gas you consume, we let you do that for your waste and recycling. That's pretty amazing. And actually, I don't know if, if people really kind of understand, but once you really start metering this, then you can get a better grasp on what's going in it. What, you know, there's all kinds of things we can go through that, but, uh, I mean, who do you guys generally work with? Like who's your main focus for your clients? Our primary customer base are facilities managers that have portfolios, portfolios of locations um, that are often pretty distributed. So it's everything from office parks to uh, retailers, quick service restaurants, gotcha. uh, big box stores. Um, and it's, it's customers who typically are trying to accomplish two different things. Uh, the first is really uh, control their costs mm -hmm. and reduce how much they're spending on utilities. And the second goal of our customers is typically around uh, sustainability and being able to divert more waste from landfills and um, reduce their carbon footprints. That's outstanding. I mean, it's a it's win-win. One, hey, they're saving money. Kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. And they're saving the planet. That's a win. <laughs> well, yeah. How does it all work? I mean, how do you guys do all that? That's an amazing feat, all that, you know, to be accomplished. Well, so in the waste industry, the way that it worked before Compology is if you had a dumpster behind any one of your locations, the best level of information that a waste company could provide to a facilities manager is it's an eight yard dumpster serviced three times a week. Therefore, you're generating 24 cubic yards of garbage per week. Got it. But what we found is that on average, dumpsters are 46% full when they get serviced, oh. which means the rest of that's air. Huge waste. Exactly. Yep. And what we do is we put cameras inside commercial and industrial dumpsters. Oh. And we're tracking a couple of key different data points. It's the location of the dumpster, so we know what business it's associated with. We have an accelerometer, so we can tell when the container is being lifted and picked up and serviced. And then by taking pictures of the inside of the dumpsters, we can automatically process those images to determine how full the container is by volume and actually what materials going inside the container. Wow. And we're using artificial intelligence to automatically process those images and then return to a facilities manager really useful information. So rather than having mm -hmm. to guess what service schedule they might need, we actually tell them you need an eight yard dumpster serviced on Mondays and Wednesdays. And the reason why is because here, here's the waste production of each one of your facilities. That's a lot of information. Well, right. It, it, it's, it's a lot when you think about it across a whole portfolio. And yeah. that's really where the, the beauty of automation comes in. Because when you look at a single facility, it's easy to have eyes on all the different moving parts, right? Exactly. But when you start scaling up and you have 50, 100, 1,000 locations in your yep. portfolio that you as a facilities manager are responsible for, for overseeing, it becomes daunting to think about all those details. And so what we really try to do is package it all up into a way that makes it super simple for a facilities manager to kind of take control of that. That's pretty amazing. I wanted to, 
and we're going to keep pushing on this, but I yeah. wanted to kind of hear a little bit more about how you guys got started, man, because the start story to me is, is so incredible. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it's, it's been a fun journey. So we got, we got started back in 2013 and my background is working in construction, okay. specifically on big infrastructure construction projects. And my responsibility was managing all of the waste coming off of those construction projects. And what should have been a part-time responsibility ended up being a full-time job because right. I was spending all of my time tracking people down with phone calls and Excel spreadsheets and trying to figure out who should get paid how much and when. And that was really the, uh, the frustration that sparked uh, me teaming up with my co-founder, Ben, who um, he and I, we went to middle school and high school together. Um, we started a small company when we were, were undergrads uh, making t-shirts nice. uh, for our friends. Um, and then we went our separate ways when we started our professional careers. And Ben is, is more of the technical brains behind the operation. Right. Um, and he was the one who, who came to the table and said, if we were able to capture a couple really basic pieces of information about dumpsters, we could totally change the way the industry operates. So we set out with that premise just about eight years ago. Wow. And we, uh, we now have product lines that we sell directly to waste hauling companies who are looking to... Uh, increase the efficiency of their collection operations. We have the product line that we're talking about today around waste metering and being able to to really get your arms around how much waste you're producing and, and the, the right services for each uh, of your locations. And um, the business is continuing to grow into some additional verticals as well. So over the road trucking, uh, ocean shipping, tracking very much the same things. But uh, waste has always been in our DNA. Um, and <laughs> well, it sounds like, I mean, just from the beginning, I love that you guys saw a need and you're like, let's do something about this. Let's, let's help people to solve this problem. And we come up with the technology. You guys start out of your garage. Yeah. And then now you're this, this thriving company and you're just growing and expanding, man. That is like, that's the heartbeat of, of America. That's, that's exactly what this country is really made up, man. This small business growing into and serving more industries and more people. It's just an amazing story. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's been a ton of fun. And I think it's really humbling when we get to spend a lot of time with our customers and, and hear about how they're using our products and the new yeah. ideas that they've brought to the table and um, being able to see it's actually solving a problem for them. So a yeah. really rewarding experience. That's amazing. So you guys have created this line and you're able to see what's going on with the waste. Mm -hmm. And you're working with facility managers who obviously, I didn't even realize how, I, we deal with, with facility managers all the time and they, and they have a lot of their plates. I mean, mm -hmm. a tremendous amount. I didn't even think about the waste management portion of this. And that's just a tremendous amount of data that you guys are collecting. What, um, I don't know, like, how does it work for them? I obviously are they're saving some time managing the data, but what about money? Are they able to save money as well? I mean, you kind of talk, touched on it a little bit. Right. Well, I think the reason why a lot of people haven't thought about waste historically is because for a long time it was out of sight, out of mind. Right. And now we're seeing two trends at the kind of macro level that are bringing it to the forefront of everyone's minds. And the first is consumer behavior is changing, yeah. right? People want to shop at brands that care about the environment and are trying to do the right thing. The second is around government regulation, mm. where we see particularly on the coast, and it's starting to take uh, effect more in the middle of the country, but, but not as strong as on the coast, where the governments are stepping in and putting in regulations that's requiring much tighter management of waste. So you see those two things, and uh, it, it's really starting to um, become something that facility managers, if they're not already thinking about it, it's yeah. going to be something that they're going to be tasked with here in the near future. And mm. the, the cost savings element 
going back to the, the data that we've seen, there are, um, there's three elements that combine into cost savings. So the first is just how much the level of service you're getting. And our data shows the average dumpter is 46% full when it gets serviced. And we help get that up between 70 and 80% is typically where we try to target. And um, that is direct cost savings. The fewer times the truck has to come and service your, your dumpster, the less it's gonna cost. The second area for cost savings is around missed pickups. Mm -hmm. And we found that 10% of scheduled service never occurs. Yeah. That means facilities managers are paying for a service that never happens. Never and happened. historically, they've had no way of knowing. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then the third contribution to the savings is related to um, additional fees. And those can be things like overflow charges or charges for contamination in your recycling. And what we do is we help proactively notify mm -hmm. facilities managers that there's an issue that might cause them some kind of fine and they can choose whether they want to you know address it or not um, but that dramatically cuts down on the spend that people are are um, incurring on right. those fees so um, a great case study i like to reference is adt security oh my and, gosh okay i saw that you guys have a video on youtube yeah that's amazing tell, tell me about so, the story that's, that's a good story well, um, I have to give a lot of credit to their team because they really had the vision to say, this is something that we can manage much more closely and really benefit the, the company's bottom line from. Uh, we were able to help them save 53% off, off the spend on waste and recycling at That's their- Huge. Yep, and this That's is at locations all over the country. Yeah. So from headquarters in Florida, their their team is able to see what's happening at facilities across the country and adjust the levels of service and hold haulers accountable for things like missed pickups um and dramatically reduce their spend wow i mean if most companies if they're investing in kind of any kind of green technology or like any kind of you know reduction trying to save resources if they can get 10 percent they're stoked. Like, Hey, we saved 10%. That's huge. 53%. Right. That is, I mean, that's, that affects everyone's bottom line. I mean, the, the people who are running the trucks, I mean, it just all the way through, this is going to be saving some money. That's mm -hmm. incredible. So you guys obviously are dealing with oversized fees. You don't have to deal with that overage fees and you're getting the, the loads to be the right size. So, on average, what is that a kind of equating for people in savings? And 53% is a lot, but is what is that what most people are going to experience? Um, most often, we see savings between 30 and 40%. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. Yep. That's a and huge impact. Depending on where your, your locations are distributed around the country, that can be thousands and multiple thousands of dollars per dumpster per month in savings. Wow, that's so that's, so, wow, that's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, we, we have, um, we have a, a great customer here in, in California that's saving close to $4,000 a year per dumpster. So if you think of a corporate campus that yeah. has 70, 80, 100 dumpsters, those dollars start to add up very quickly. Well, that's really, really incredible. If well, here's the other thing too. And I was thinking, and I'm sure this is kind of a no brainer question, but obviously if there's less pickups, it's going to be less trucks on the road too, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. The, the benefit environmentally is you're helping to reduce your carbon emissions oh. by trucks coming and servicing your containers less frequently. And I'm not sure, uh, you know, how many people are familiar with garbage trucks coming through their facilities and causing disruptions. Um, but if you're, if the trucks are on site less, you've got less noise, um, fewer safety concerns in your parking lots. Mm -hmm. um, there's all these uh, kind of secondary or tertiary benefits that uh, really start to add up. Now I can tell you if we, if we had less trips to our office, I'd be stoked. <laughs> <laughs> we had to wheel those things out 
it's some, those sometimes they're so heavy I had to get a forklift, push them out there to the to the curb because they won't come get them. Right. So every time we have to do that, it is a pain in the butt and it's loud and and then we have to move them back. So right. yeah, less of that would be great. We 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 see that particularly in the multifamily housing mm -hmm. segment, apartment buildings where you have tenants who want to sleep and they don't want to be woken up by a garbage truck every day of the week coming by that facility, especially when they don't have to. So um, that's just one example. That's crazy. So one of the things that you said um, is that you guys know what's going into dumpsters. Okay, so let's talk about that. Like, how do you know that, first of all? <laughs> I mean, obviously there's a camera, but. Right. And I do want to clarify, a lot of people hear that and immediately jump to Compology being Big Brother, watching everything that's going inside the dumpster. And that's, that's really not the case. Um, when we take images, we can see that there are generally six different categories of items. And what we've trained our software to do is automatically identify items within those six different categories. So uh, the most common category is garbage bags. Mm -hmm. So bagged material, and we can't see what's going inside the bags, but we can tell you that there's black bags, white bags, clear bags, blue bags. But we can also tell you that most of the contamination that people are getting fined for comes from things like bulky items, furniture, mm. pallets, tires getting put in recycling containers. Christmas trees. <laughs> Christmas trees, or actually the bigger issue is Christmas tree lights, right. which oh, okay. can get wrapped around the equipment at the sorting facilities and cause major expense to the waste collection companies. We see things like styrofoam or uncollapsed cardboard boxes, which we can help to coach people on to say, if you broke down your cardboard boxes, you would actually save a lot of money because you would require half the service that you're currently sure. getting. Um, so we're not down to the level of counting the number of soda cans that go into the container. Not but yet. what we do focus, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> what we do focus on is it's the big ticket items that cause the most cost for waste companies to process out. Yeah. And the associated cost to facilities managers have to pay fines against. That's incredible, man. Okay, so that leads me to a question. Artificial intelligence. <laughs> it's taking over the world. I'm just saying, it scares the crap out of me, but it's amazing. So are you guys, and you obviously have to be using some kind of AI. Right. The, the system is, is pretty much all artificial intelligence oh, powered. Man. When we take images from the inside of containers, 98% of them are automatically processed within seconds. And we purposely siphon off some of those images to continue training our models and uh, improving the system. Uh, somewhat of like a quality control. Yeah. But um, the what makes Compology really good at what we do is we now have close to 100 million images from the inside of dumpsters that we use to continue training our algorithms to get better and better over time. Um, That's crazy. So the more, the more dumpsters that we monitor, the better that we get, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I get a lot of sampling. You never know <laughs> exactly. what's going to go into those dumpsters, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, we've seen all, all kinds. Too. You just dare, you never know. Uh, we have internal to the company, we have a, uh, a messaging thread where it, um, people drop in pictures of cute raccoons that they see in dumpsters. <laughs> so it's a continuous thread of cute raccoons. Well, let's have a roll with that. Uh, actually, I think you guys have a, a little raccoon mascot, right? Is that correct? <laughs> yes, we, we've tried to retire him, Gizmo. <laughs> But uh, yeah, for, for a, a long period of time, he was with us and, and a lot of fun. Well, I'd imagine the raccoons spend quite a bit of time in those dumpsters. I know they do where I live. <laughs> <laughs> guys are everywhere. How do you, um, 
I mean, we we're always talking about AI. I mean, you you guys obviously did you develop AI yourselves, or how did it work? We developed everything from the ground up. Wow! And starting about eight years ago, there were not the same types of tools that are available today. So our team is built of experts who understand the technology inside and out and have been with us for, for the last eight years building the technology. Um, and we're really excited to see how what we've built can now be leveraged in some of these other industries that we've, we've shared, the over-the-road trucking and, and shipping and things like that. I imagine any place really where you need to understand the volume of materials or, or what materials are in, in a space, that this would be huge. You know, I can, I can think of, like you said, the trucking industry and, and all those cargo containers. Um, I mean, even I can even think of like warehousing and all kinds of stuff that would just be something coming up. And, and I love this show so much and I learned so much on it that uh, and we get to talk about technology all the time. And so I'm, I guess I'm a big nerd, man. I love this stuff, but yeah. And I know from, from me and you, I kind of want to understand like, why do you feel like technology is so critical at this point? I mean, obviously this, we're changing so much as a, as a, as a country and this is technology at work right now. Like this is becoming the norm for people to communicate, but mm -hmm. for you guys, where do you see it kind of going and what's critical for you moving forward? Well, what we've seen is expectations of businesses and trickling down to the individuals and the facilities managers who are responsible for executing against plans. Those expectations only get higher and higher and higher, right? The returns from companies are only expected to get better. And there is a limit on what a human can do in a, in a day. Yeah. And so where I see technology being really powerful is when you have tools that can expand the capacity of individuals to accomplish more. And especially in the short term, I don't see technology being a replacement for people and artificial intelligence kind of taking over the world taking and replacing world. people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see it being very much what we call uh, human assist meaning it's going to take you, Sean, and make you way more productive and uh, make the business that you run more valuable. I, love um, it. I told my wife all the time, I'm going to live forever. <laughs> going to be re replacement parts. I'm going to employ those. I'll have robot legs. We'll be walking around. No problem. We'll be good. I'm sure she's thrilled about that. <laughs> she is excited. <laughs> Dollar, I'm not going anywhere. Listen, That's I awesome. have uh, one more question to kind of wrap up. Um, I kind of want to know where you guys are going next. Like what's, what's your next big thing? What are you focusing on now? Well, what's really exciting for Compology is that we are doing larger and larger deployments. And today we operate in 43 U S states, wow. Puerto Rico, every province in Canada and Mexico. And what we're doing is making the services that we provide really accessible to people who have nationwide and international footprints. So that's been a really big focus for us is how can we make this so uh, that a facilities manager can give us a call, say, here's my need, and we can help them through the entire life cycle from installation planning, you know, getting, getting a sensor in every dumpster through the business process change of, hey, what does my day-to-day -day now look like that yeah. I have this technology doing all this awesome work for me, to demonstrating the value back to their organizations and quantifying what they've done. Um, and that's a place where we're investing really heavily um, and have been seeing great results. And I mean, it shows in things like the, the ADT example um, in the case study video. So. Uh, we're, we're, we're thrilled um, and appreciate all the support that our customers have given us to, to say, here's where you guys need to improve. Here's what we need in order to, to roll this out on a global scale. Um, and we're, we're running fast at it and having a great time.
it's you know what it's it's a great story i love that you started you know in the garage and this is where you are now and and it's huge it's amazing what you guys have done in really a short time and i think that is attributed directly to the amount of people that you're serving and and what you're being able to do with the technology and being able to really cut down waste and really help people and and save money but you're really in doing a lot more than that so thank you for what you're doing it's amazing i can't wait to have you guys back on eventually i want to hear more about what's going on in your industry because there's That'd so much great. to talk about we couldn't even cover all of it today um but if people want to find you guys what's the best way to reach you we're on social media, uh, LinkedIn and, and Twitter at Compology. And uh, I encourage everybody to sign up for our newsletter uh, at Compology.com. We have awesome content about our products and the industry in general that are coming out almost on a weekly basis to uh, stay uh, on top of where the industry is headed. Outstanding, man. I will put all the information in the notes for the show and share you guys because you're doing amazing things and can't wait to see what happens for you guys next. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Really appreciate the the support. Really appreciate it.